thank you, Mr. Batwal, for joining us. Uh, uh, you know, we live in interesting times. Uh, three, four things are happening around us. The, as I mentioned at the start, the technology, the digital sort of revolution is uh, really taking charge of all parts of our life. Uh, BFSI is a sector that has uh, kind of been at the forefront of both taking advantage of that, you know, digital leap, as well as being at the, you know, forefront of innovating with products, with customer reach out. So let me start uh, with a sort of larger, uh, you know, umbrella question, if I may. We've seen last few years, especially because of COVID, uh, digital penetration as well as, you know, awareness of health has significantly gone up. And that's provided a lot of tailwind for the sector. But as we come out of COVID, what we've seen in many other sectors, in media and advertising and many other sectors, that the kind of peak we achieved during COVID, both in terms of, you know, digital usage, as well as in terms of, you know, awareness of health, that is kind of plateaued off, right? What are the trends you've seen now coming out of COVID, especially in the last six months for, you know, the sector that you operate in? Nawal, uh, firstly, thank you for inviting me to be part of this uh, program and a very good afternoon to all of you. I think uh, first let me start by, you know, just giving a disclaimer that I'm not a marketing expert, folks, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm someone who runs a business, so my inputs will be more from a business perspective on how I see some of these trends uh, in the marketing area and more, more importantly, consume, the way consumers are responding to you know, whatever you, uh, you were just sharing early on. Uh, like all other categories, uh, our own category saw a very significant shift in the way which, in which consumers looked at digital during COVID time. I think clearly there was no option, right? Uh, the physical world was non-existent. Uh, and, and there were two or three clear trends that emerged which actually impact our category. One is the general adoption of consumers to the digital way of being. Uh, while there was definitely a, a segment which was much more digital ready, digital native, or uh, you know whatever term we give to that uh, segment, but even the segment which used to have their own concerns about you know using the digital segment clearly uh, started using it because they had no option. Let me give you an example in the area of health. Uh, we used to have something called. A, a doctor on call facility in our products uh, very early on uh, in our when we launched our business no one ever used it because consumers were not comfortable we, we, we were well ahead of time in 2016 when we brought that facility uh, during covid suddenly that became a huge hit why because you know digital was the way of uh, uh, of of interaction because and you couldn't have, have avoided that conversation interaction with the healthcare facility uh, the whole dig health area actually got a significant push, you know, of digital adoption during COVID. And, you know, you've seen recently the whole, uh, you know, announcement of the Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission by the government. I think that in many ways has got accentuated by what we saw uh, uh, in, in, in this category. But I think more importantly, it gave us an opportunity to reach out to consumers at scale and more importantly at a hyper-personal level. I could talk to Naval as Naval rather than typically what happens in any communication, uh, you know, which is very generic, right? All of us uh, get that. But, you know, just, just uh, maybe I, I should just give you uh, uh, a 30-second sense of what our business is about. We run a health insurance business, which is very different from what you would traditionally experience as a health insurance business. Health insurance business is all about what I call sickness insurance, sickness funding. I don't think so that's the way the category can run because t when we are building a lifelong relationship with consumers, you have to build something more meaningful, something more positive than a fear-based uh, engagement. So we you know, call ourselves a health-first insurer where we engage with consumers around the theme of health and then uh, insurance uh, you know, if something happens. Now, something like that is, is high engagement, high-scale engagement, very personal. And which is where we saw uh, that shift happening and helping us a lot. So yes, you are right, the adoption went up, but if the base was X, I think clearly 
the next base is significantly higher than where it was. And even if there is a, a plateau, I mean, I'm technically not necessarily seeing a plateau, but the pace of growth that we were seeing earlier may, ha may have come down a bit. So gen definitely consumers are more willing to talk to the category on the digital world because they feel that, you know, it is more meaningful to them, it is more personal to them than what it used to be earlier. And we have leveraged that significantly, uh, you know, uh, well, because, I, you know, we think that it's, it's a huge opportunity for businesses. We are also uh, seeing that, you know, some of the segments like senior citizens, for example, uh, we would struggle to reach out to them, uh, you know, in a meaningful manner. Suddenly that segment is completely open. And why it is important? Because that's a very important segment for, uh, you know, the health insurance business. So I think newer category of segments have go, got completely opened up. Now, I think it's for uh, the businesses to respond to this willingness of consumers to engage and interact with them on the digital platform in a way that makes it more relevant for them. I think that's an opportunity we've got. We have to now respond back uh, to the uh, consumers. Yeah, very interesting two, three points. You know, good growth means, you know, bullishness for all of us. It also means increased targets for next year. Uh, but what it also does is it brings in, you know, more aggression from all the players in the market, perhaps more players in the market. So overall, while it lifts the tide for everyone, it also means more complexity for, you know, business owners, for CEOs who are running the company, more com complexity for marketers in terms of reaching out. You know, BFSI sector is very, very unique uh, in many ways. But two of the uh, important sort of uh, pillars that stand out for BFSI sector and perhaps you can throw more light on that is one uh, trust because you know as you rightly said it is about health and you know we all many of us for example might want the same car but when it comes to you know health related products everybody is unique so the second aspect of health is personalization right trust and personalization these are perhaps if you talk to a you know business owner or a marketer today are the most difficult puzzles to crack when it com comes to sort of uh, talking to consumers. So what is uh, your approach on that? How do you kind of go about tackling these two, you know, very critical challenges which are important for your sector? Yeah, I think uh, in, in financial services, uh, I think the first element of trust comes from the offerer itself. I mean, who is the offerer? Which is a brand that you're representing? At least uh, in our case, we are very fortunate to represent an extremely large and trust, trustworthy and you know, tr trusting brand, right? I mean, it, it has a history of uh, you know, more than 100 years. So therefore, that's something that you know, comes given to us. But having said that, uh, it's, it's, you, you, you don't, you, I mean, you have to earn the element of trust from consumers, right? And a lot of that comes from experience that, and, and in, in today's digital world, you know, the word of mouth has a very large implication in, in, in how, you know, the trust in the brands, you know, actually moves from one to the other consumers. So I think that's very, very uh, clearly given. Uh, in our case, because of our model of a very personalized health first kind of conversation with consumers, our, our products, for example, say that, you know, if you live a healthy life, we will reward you for good health. Uh, you know, the digital world gives us that opportunity. All of you are smartphone users. We know uh, what's happening in your physical world in terms of your physical health. And based on that and a few other uh, you know, matrix elements that we have, we reward you. Now, I'm interacting with each you know, consumer, therefore, as a brand at a very personal level. My conversation with is at a very personal level. Hey, you know, uh, Naval, uh, we saw you uh, yesterday that, you know, you, for example, you walked X steps or uh, you know for the last one week you were walking except suddenly we realized in the next one week it has gone down is there a reason can we help you uh, you know so i'm saying that and that conversation to novel will be very different from a email that novel gets you know walking is good you must walk i mean that would not uh, you know is not something that consumers love because there's so much of spam junk that is you know uh, forced up upon us that unless it's hyper personalized and relevant it doesn't really appeal to the, you know, the brand. But because of our model itself, similarly, uh, we get so much health data that we risk stratify. And we s reach out to consumers through, you know, all mediums, including digital, of course, is a large scale medium that we can talk to the consumers about their personal health, N is equal to one. I think that makes a difference. And I think the digital medium makes it really, really practical, more importantly. Uh, economically viable. I can't deal with scale engagement 
in the physical world. There's no way we can make that happen. I think that's where, and I think if you have the right content in that communication and the right messaging, of course, there are aspects of behavior science, et cetera, which are coming into play so that, you know, the right nudges, et cetera, come into play. But I think content, you know, becomes very critical uh, when we reach out in, in the context of personal communication because content also has to be personalized. It can't just be generic. Absolutely. I think important points you make here, uh, very importantly, you know, how digital allows you to reach the mass scale. And if I can add to that at a, you know, reasonable cost, if you were to do it in, you know, the old sort of legacy world, the cost would be humongous. <clears throat> Tell us coming to, you know, the content and the marketing part of your business. I know uh, you don't run marketing, but, you know, when you sit down with your marketing team with a brief and every CEO today is looking at, you know, one, investing more and exper experimenting more and more sort of in the digital world. What are the few, uh, you know, KPI metrics that you tell your marketing team for to look for when it comes to use of digital to, you know, either reach out to customers or say run loyalty programs or run retention programs? See, I mean, at, at the end of the day, uh, what are the business objectives? Um, Let's say in our case, what will we want to do? We'll want to first reach out to a much larger base of the targeted prospect base, right? Uh, am I, is my targeted customer base aware of what I'm offering, what I stand for as a brand? I think it starts with there. I mean, the funnel is, is the, you know, has to be opened at that level. And, and, and thereafter, all the other KPIs, uh, of course, come in in terms of, you know, Will, the, will that targeted segment in terms of the way you are communicating with them, the content they're using, are they finding that relevant to be willing to respond to that you know, conversation uh, desire of ours uh, with the targeted population, right? And I think the, the first thing is that each of these intervention, you know, campaign or whatever you want to call it, it has to be meant for a very targeted base. You know, when we used to do or when we do, let's say, a TV campaign, typically it's a much more wider mass uh, uh, program, right? I mean, you, you may say, okay, I'm, I'm targeting this segment on this TV program or on you know, this uh, news channel, etc. But you, we all know that it is, it's not really as segmented as you want to make it. So I think in, in terms of digital marketing intervention, that, that whole aspect of how are you making it relevant for that focus segment that you know, we have given you, to reach out for. That's another uh, very, very important. For example, we recently launched a product for the millennial and I'll, you know, talk, we'll talk about it a little bit more, hopefully. Uh, and, it, you know, it, there's a very different way of talking to that segment than, let's say, if I, you know, when we launched our senior citizen product or, you know, teenagers product as they, you know, sometimes, some, sometimes they're called. So I, I think that's another uh, thing. And, and of course, many of them, I, normally my marketing colleagues uh, don't like to the funnel to re go back final, finally to the you know, moolah, the, 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 in, the, in, in, in the box, the cash in the box, but that's something that we keep having some interesting argument that finally I want money into the organization. You know, you, you may have a wonderful, you know, campaign, you have a wonderful, you know, in intervention, but is the consumer finally saying, yes, I'm willing to sign the check? You know, and, 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 and I really, because, but having said that, there's an also a brand element about the whole, you know, whole program that is it really helping us position and create the brand that we are trying to do. Uh, for example, in our case, we didn't want to be seen as the traditional, boring, reactive, uh, I don't want to really engage with this kind of a brand which traditionally insurance is known for, to be hopefully seen as slightly more interesting, you know, seems like something worth of, you know, worth talking to and understanding what they're really offering. And uh, in many ways, we have, uh, I must say that the team has done a reasonably good job to get so us Tell there. us a little, uh, little bit more about that, Mayank, because it's very interesting what you put across because, you know, health, especially health insurance when, when it comes to that, most of us wake up when we are in our 40s, right? When you're in your 20s or 30s, you know, you don't bother you. You go to your gym or you go running and try and take care of that. Even otherwise, you know, your body sort of supports the journey. Now, when you target millennials or when you target the younger population, it is doubly difficult to talk to them because that's not like a priority area, right? So how do you sort of crack that challenge? Tell us the campaign you've done. Tell us a little more about that. Yeah, so uh, it has to first start with the offering itself, right? Because I may, I may do a wonderful campaign, but ultimately, 
if the offering that is being positioned before the consumer through that campaign, if it's not fitting the expectation, requirement, need of that consumer segment, it will not. Uh, so, you know, we, we've launched a product called Active Fit. Uh, you know, it's meant typically for uh, the millennial segment. You know, what, what were some of the insights that we were getting when we reached out to that segment? They said, hey, uh, why should I buy insurance, you know, health insurance? I mean, I'm f fairly hale and hearty. I don't see myself in the hospital. Your, you know, traditionally health insurance offers uh, hospitalization benefit. I don't want to build a relationship with you. Uh, we said, okay, uh, what if we offer you, uh, you know, a reward for staying healthy? Seems interesting. Talk more. Uh, I, I also like, like instant gratification. What's in it for me here and now? Uh, that's what, you know, I, I hear the millennial population say all the time. I mean, give me something here and now. I don't want to wait for the future. I mean, I don't even want to wait for the end of the year or end of the month. Tell me what can I get now? Okay, what if I use digital face scan, scan technology? to con understand what your health condition is instantly, you know, we give you a 10% discount if you're healthy. Okay, seems interesting. What more? So I think there are many such benefits. I don't want to get into product to bore you guys, but so now the product seems to be, the offering seems to be making sense to that consumer segment. How do I reach out to them? How do I communicate to them? Which medium do I use? Uh, I'm not sure TV is the best segment for that population, right? Digital is because that's where they are. I mean, ultimately, what is marketing all about? To my mind, I mean, what do I expect them? Be where the consumer is. Don't call the consumer to you know, where you are because that's not what will give you scale. So if the consumer is at scale in the digital economy, in the digital platform, get there. So in this campaign, uh, we said, okay, uh, they must hear the messaging from people whom they can relate to. Uh, so, you know, the protagonist in this, you know, the person who's playing is, is you know, we have Ali Fazal who's taking this, uh, you know, um, communication to that, that segment uh, on the digital world. It's, you know, typically an Insta or a, you know, uh, campaign, of course, on other mediums as well, like Facebook and YouTube, etc. Uh, you know, we have, we have used influencers in a big way in, in this communication uh, where people like Radhika Bose and Varun Verma who are, uh, health influencers yeah. whom we are, I'm, I was told that, you know, I was not the target segment, by the way, for that, these individuals, but I was told that the millennials really look at them as real influencers, and we use them, uh, we use some, uh, you know, interesting uh, techniques called, I'm, I'm, you know, the photo bombing and all of stuff, which really the, is something we used, and, and now they're put on, uh, uh, you know, we asked our, uh, many of our consumers to, you know, create their own reels, etc. So I think it was in the way the consumers kind of consume content and, uh, you know, some very interesting feedback we have got so far of how we took that, uh, this, uh, both the offering, how we designed the offering and how also how we took it to them through whom and etc. So uh, something very different from what, uh, you know, we did earlier for our different uh, segments in the past. Yes, and I think use of influencers really caught on in the last three years. In fact, last week we... <clears throat> we did another sort of report about the influencer marketing economy, you know, how it's growing and some of the numbers said that, you know, excluding use of media, almost 1500 crores is already being spent by brands and corporates on, you know, hiring influencers and influencers now come in all shapes and forms, you know, 20 years back there was only a brand ambassador, which would typically be, you know, Bollywood listers. Now you start from, you know, uh, a grade Bollywood listers going down to what what has come to be known as micro and nano influencers. You know, uh, people who have uh, reach uh, in thousands, but you know, very deep engagement with your community. So for a health sort of uh, focused campaign, that's very interesting to look at. Tell me, it's you know very early days when it comes to you know things like influencer marketing. So a lot of companies are still experimenting, trying to figure out which is the right fit. Uh, you know, what is the right platform to go to, what is the kind of uh, right messaging. While, you know, you start from the top, like you explained, you identified the need gap, you went to the millennial, you identified that digital is the right platform to be. When it comes to the bottom of the funnel, really, which is about, you know, getting these influencers, using the messaging, and then doing what we call conversions or attribution, how are the results? You mean, what were the learning from those results? Uh, let me ask you. What, what are the things that you would do differently next time? Yeah, so at least in this campaign, it's, I uh, you know we are still in the process. So, uh, you, I mean, probably I'm not sure I can share uh, concrete outcomes yet. I think we're still in the process because we just launched it a few week, couple of weeks back. Uh, but from whatever we have done earlier, I think, see, 
you, you started by saying that. First is that even identifying the right set of influencers, that's a journey, right? Because you start with, uh, because you said nano influencer. And if you are doing hyper-personalized uh, engagement effort, then you know, the choice of that nano influencer becomes very, very important. And of course, there is, there is a, a, you know, effort involved in, there, there's a process and there is a whole discipline of how do you convert that interest and you know, that the consumer is ex expressing, the desire that the consumer is expressing to have conversation, to finally onboarding with this, they, 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 sometimes there's a slip in that whole process itself. But I think it's, it's the journey of both identifying, uh, we are going through our own uh, learnings in terms of the content, uh, you know, in terms of what is it, the right content, because we are not dealing with a very, uh, you know, I would say glamorous category. We are dealing with a category which is still not something that consumers are typically waiting. It's not that you get up in the morning and say, hey, I'm going to buy health insurance today. No, you don't do that, unfortunately. Though you must, by the way, follow all of those who don't have, you must explore that, it's important. Uh, but you don't do that. So the, it's, also, it's also therefore what will influence. So we are using uh, some, we are having some conversations with people who understand behavior science in, in the way our content is created. How do you build in the right nudges in that communication? So sometimes it's not about just using the uh, you know the, the the right influencer but how, what is that right message that create converts that intent into action and especially in the area of health novel uh, and not just insurance by the way all of all of us are used to having a first january resolution for i'm going to be healthy this year and what happens on 7th or 8th of january we all know so you know it it still requires a lot of discipline right so i think those are many other areas that we are constantly going back revisiting. Uh, so we have on board, for example, someone who's a, uh, you know, uh, who's a Harvard uh, professor, expert in behavior science. He's helping us kind of look at the messaging, the communication, etc. So I think these are areas that we are going through our own learning process because we are dealing with, a, we are trying to do something very different, especially in the category that we represent. Very important, very interesting you mentioned, you know, experts in behavioral science who are helping, you know, it's, it's, it's like how medicine is moving. People are, while you rely on modern medicine, uh, you also kind of are going back to the roots in terms of, you know, what in India used to be known as natural, you know, naturopathy, relying on more natural products. That's why this entire wave of organic food products is kind of, you know, sweeping uh, the world right now because people want to consume more and more food which is kind of unadulterated, uh, lesser on toxic values. So, you know, health insurance is really kind of dovetails into that. I see our time is up, so I'll... I'll ask you one la last question before we throw the house open. Uh, I, I hear you in the sense that, you know, more and more of the money that you're spend, spending for customer reach out is happening on the digital platforms. Uh, legacy media still has value, right? You spoke about television briefly. Uh, naturally, it does not allow you a very sort of targeted communication at each of the cohorts and some of the cohorts are not even present on television. Uh, print also might not uh, allow you. So how do you look at your overall media mix now? Uh, it is a given that majority of the company's brands are now doing increasing spends on digital, right? Like I mentioned at the start, the Group M report this month said, this week uh, rather said, 48% of money that companies are spending is now going on digital. What is your proportion of spends you're doing on digital, if you can tell us that? And what is the value you still see for legacy media, uh, TV and print? Yeah, interesting that you asked that question, Naval, because in the morning itself, uh, I was having this conversation with uh, my marketing head and, you know, in the context of a, uh, you know, a more mass brand campaign that we are, we are kind of contemplating. And I was asking this question that, you know, should we go full, you know, digital in this? And again, uh, I'm, I'm not a marketing expert. The response I got from my marketing experts, including some of the other partners, was that, you know, for that kind of a program uh, effort, we must use the mass media TV also. And I was told, you guys will <coughs> know it better, is that, you know, post-COVID, I mean, the shift that has happened significantly towards the, uh, you know, the digital platform, the OTT and all of them, uh, there is, a, you know, kind of a bit of a reverse shift happening back to the mass media on TV, etc. So we must use that. Uh, I was still asking them, you know, please help me understand why, because uh, you know, uh, that's not as efficient, at least as I, you know, started feeling. 
but I'm told that no, that is still required. So from whatever we are seeing now, I mean, the sense I'm getting in that if you are, you know, so all our regular marketing campaigns are more or less digital, the regular stuff that we keep doing, uh, which are very, very targeted, which are very specific segment focused. But where we are trying to now take the brand to a larger, ma you know, mass of, and uh, I would say more a larger congregate of, you know, several segments with some common messaging, there I am getting a sense that we'll have to use the TV as a medium as well, apart from a few other traditional medium. That's the sense uh, I'm, I'm getting. Yeah, very interesting you mentioned that. I'll just add a couple of points to that. You know, when I say the average spend in India is 48% on digital, that also means that there are companies who are already doing more than 50%, perhaps 60% on digital. And I would imagine a category like yours, especially in the BFI size space, certainly is on the higher end and not on the lower end. So you are certainly 50% plus. And interestingly, yesterday I read an article uh, on, you know, uh, HBR, Harvard Business Review, which speaks about how many large corporations are kind of how, having experimented significantly with digital, are starting to not kind of wean away from digital, but also bring money back into, you know, legacy media, especially television. Digital has been experimented enough in the last three, four years to understand, you know, the strengths, understand the weaknesses. But one thing I think remains true that, you know, a lot of companies uh, continue to use television in sort of helicopter level, you know, push when you want to build your brand, do a large campaign. But as you rightly said, when you're doing individual tactical campaigns, digital holds the sway. Thank you so much, Mayank.